the allure of the, the, the trading floor is there for everybody who works in, in, in an organisation like that. It's where I wanted to be. Um, it, it's probably where I'd always aspired to be since I'd worked within, within the banking and the finance world. Masters of the Universe type of stuff, it's, it, it, it's where, I, where I wanted to get to. Success was very important to me and you know, that's where I wanted to be at. The Chancellor has ordered an inquiry into the collapse of Britain's oldest merchant bank. The bearings collapse shakes the markets, the trader who blew the bank's capital... The man who broke bearings with a billion dollar gamble is on the run tonight in the Far East. If there is anybody here who doesn't remember me, uh, unfortunately I will always be remembered for running up £862 million pounds worth of losses in 1995 and the collapse of Barron's Bank. It's very forward thinking that a university or, or any organisation is, uh, is willing to listen to me and to listen to some of the things that went wrong during my time at Barron's. Um, it's a story of gross incompetence and negligence and, you know, I would put my, my own incompetence and negligence very much at the forefront of that, but, uh, you know, there were a lot of supporting acts within the bank as well at the same time. Leeson wasn't meant to be speculating with Bearing's money, but when a colleague made a mistake, he tried to recoup the losses by placing big bets using futures and options. And when I left Singapore on the 23rd of February, you know, I didn't know that the bank's capital base was only 250 million pound. As long as they kept giving me money, I kept trading and trying to trade myself out of the situation. Doesn't make it right, but um, that's, what I, that's what I was trying to do. When I left on the 23rd of February, I, uh, I fled to Kuala Lumpur and ended up in a place called Kota Kinabalu. I knew that the effect of my actions was gonna be disastrous. I didn't realise quite how catastrophic it was going to be um, because it didn't enter my mind for one moment that I thought the bank would collapse. Um, when I woke up on the 25th of February, I went down to the news agents in, in the hotel that I was staying in and I picked up the local newspaper, the Asian Wall Street Journal, and the headline across the front of the Asian Wall Street Journal was British Bank Collapses. My immediate thought was, that's great, somebody's in more trouble than me. <laughs> When, when I was arrested in uh, 1995 in Frankfurt and then you know, went through the whole process of the court uh, and talking to the media and everything else that happened during that period, Behrens was always described as this wake-up call that nobody would ever forget because a 233-year-old merchant bank uh, collapsed as a consequence of my actions. But you know, if you look back over the last 10 years, 12, 13 years since since the date of bearings, you'll see that there are far too many financial scandals and road trading scandals to mention. And the fact is that only lip service was ever paid to the fact that risk management needed to improve. One man who can offer expert insight into what's happened at Societe Generale is indeed Nick Leeson, the original rogue trader. You know, the markets are in turmoil at the moment. And to me, it comes down to a, to, to, to a very simple thing, and that's the degree of understanding. The management of the bank, you know, the people making the decisions are, are totally divorced from what was going on. This, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard some of the reports that are around today that, uh, I mean, one report that I heard earlier was that this happened over, uh, over a very short period. It can't have done. You know, the guy was apparently trading CAC futures and DAX futures, which are exchange uh, traded products that everybody can see the positions that are open on the exchange. Um, I don't think that was the only thing that he was trading, um, but the this has to have happened over a long period of time. So it's, you know, it's incompetence and negligence of a, of a very high order. Now, same thing happened at Bearings years and years ago. I would put my incompetence and negligence at the, at the forefront of that and, and never try to hide from that. But this is a, you know, it, I imagine when the story unfolds and it will take a few days for it to unfold, the degree of correlation will be extremely high. But the Bank of England over the last few years has always has always protected them themselves with this theory of responsible lending. Uh, and I, I think the situation that we're in at the moment will prove to anybody that there has been no responsible lending over the last five or six years. 
Um, and, and that's why we're in, in, in as much difficulty as we are at the moment. If you add the fact that at the moment there are something like $164 trillion worth of trades in the OTC market... Over, that, over the counter? Over the, over deals the counter. Deals between yeah. two banks, yeah. for so example. These, so these don't exist. They're not, they're not in the equation at the moment, but they're there and they have to be honoured. So unless you have a regulatory authority or a central bank that understands exactly what's going on in the financial markets. Now the problem, you, the, 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 um, the, the very talented individuals that you have in the room and that exist in other countries are naturally drawn towards the trading environment where the big profits can be made, the big salaries can be handed down. That has to change, you know, that, that something has to be done that attracts these people into the regulatory, the compliance and the government governance framework so that people who understand the business and have that aptitude and intelligence to be able to understand the business can control what's going on.